Hi everybody, we're going to do a Q&A. Today we are going to tackle the question, how do we build ourselves an ideal fall-winter wardrobe? And actually more specifically, how do I build myself an ideal fall-winter capsule wardrobe? See, um, this whole thing was inspired by a Korean customer of mine who emailed me asking me, can you suggest a list of items that would make an ideal business wardrobe that I don't need to chop and change for the next five years? And, um, you know, normally when I deal with my own bespoke stuff uh, or if I'm dealing with clients, clients tend to want to buy things one to two things at a time, establish a pipeline and slowly, slowly build up on that. And uh, the idea of like trying to build an entire collection in one shot is interesting. You know, because when I buy additional things, you know, they're like, you're always buying with a pre-existing wardrobe in mind, right? So your new thing needs to be like somewhat versatile and fit in with what you already had. But what if you actually took a blank slate and you started all over again with your wardrobe? Like, would the things that you pick be different? You know, would you pick things that are less versatile, but in their specific niches and contexts, they work really, really well? Um, so that is what today's little experiment is all about. All right, so um, in the back of my mind, I know I have these models available to me, right? I think I want some sort of double-breasted jacket, such as the Model 6. I think I want some sort of American style, either suit or jacket, like the Model 11. I think I want some sort of single-breasted, southern and Italian style jacket, like the Model 3. And then I also want some casual stuff, something like this, our three pocket blues on, or something like this, our road jacket. Cause you know, like despite these being casual pieces, we can still make them in non-casual, well, not non-casual, but like in the fabrics that we traditionally would use for tail clothing. And also um, some sort of winter version of this, this fire jacket. So let's move on and have a look at cloth. Right. Okay. so. We're gonna do this the same way that um, we do it at the Armory when we put together our seasonal collections for the entire store. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but this is a way that always seems to work for me. So what happens is I like to look at the cloth first and then I like to imagine what model am I going to make this cloth with. So the first one I wanna look at today is the Standeven Heritage Twist. Now, the Heritage Twist is made by a mill called Kynuk. And Kynuk has just like an incredible hand, an incredible color palette. It's very country in terms of feel, but actually the colors aren't necessarily so country. The colors are actually a little more interesting, a little more city-like and cool, rather than like very, very brown and green. Um, so I'm really excited to see if I can find something for myself in here. Like already a few things are catching my eye. Very, very blue-toned hound's tooth. It's a little bit fuzzy as well. See, this is kind of cool, right? It's got like a lot of beige, a lot of brown, but also like this very light honey color in there. Ooh, super interesting, I like that. Okay, so we got that blue hound's tooth. We got this kind of brownie, honey sort of thing. What else we got back here? And this is kind of awesome too. Alrighty. Got three selections in here. What else do we have in that kind of heavy-ish, fuzzy-ish, country-ish vein? Um, let's look at some Fox Brothers stuff. Fox Brothers worsted flannel. Uh, Fox obviously being very famous for flannels in general. Um, does have a few really beautiful things. This is actually really cool. Like almost a greenish and then a very dark brown and then a warm gray. Really interesting, I like that. And I have sort of been thinking about doing a new slightly soft and fuzzy blue blazer for myself, in which case I have to say the Fox one is not bad at all. Okie dokie. A couple of fox tweeds. I've never used this book myself. I'm excited to have a look because I've seen them so many times and I love what they do in terms of like palette and color. Ooh, that's awesome. Look at that. 
navy, Air Force blue, pale gray houndstooth, but then also with this check in a mustard color. Really unusual. That is superb. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. This is super cool too. Very fun. I do like this. I do like the idea of something really bold like that. Where was that one I liked? Ah, oh, there it is. That one's really good. My little strips of paper are getting smaller and smaller now. Where's that really good? There we go. That one's awesome. I love that. This is the sort of thing too that um, it could either be a tailored piece or it could be something like a 3PB. This would actually be really good as something like a 3PB. Okay, that was cool. Let's have a look at the other Fox Tweed book. Nice though, super nice. Oh, that's awesome. See, this is awesome. I love the red. Oh, I do like this though. See, I can imagine that. Um, Dull breasted with metal buttons. It'd be super cool like that. You know, kind of like this rustic, rustic charm to it. Color is really interesting too. Black and then a medium blue and then a gray in it as well. Okay, cool. Let's shortlist that and that. The Drapper's Magic Cashmere. This is a good book. It has a lot of patterned cashmere and it tends to be a little bit lighter in weight. You, know, you, you almost call it like, like decorative cashmere rather than practical cashmere. Like if you'd imagine like 15 ounce um, sport coat weight navy cashmere, that would be like a practical, like toolbox sort of cashmere. Whereas this is a lot more fancy. I do like that though, that's cool. It's really nice. Mm, yeah. Oh, and there's that one too. That's good too. Which one? Okay, so there's those two. You know, cashmere always has this slight luster to it. I usually like it in like really deep colors because of that luster. Oh, these are really nice. So some things like that, we just look at it and it just, it just looks expensive. It's very expensive. It's beautiful. See, I love that twill in it. That twill is really cool. I may, I may end up making myself another navy cashmere blazer. I guess I could do it differently. I could do it as a double-breasted, instead of a single-breasted. And I do like these two. I'm very curious to see this video actually ends up making it as a one contiguous video because some people might find this extremely boring, but I have to say I'm kind of enjoying it. So what the hell? Another thing I wanted to look at was mohair, but not like summer mohair. I wanted to look at winter mohair, like heavyweight mohair. The stand even mohairs are really, really good. Um, this is actually something that stand even is quite famous for. So that's one mohair book. Cape Town is the other one. There's a couple of patterns in here too. These are really nice, very kind of James Bondy. Whoops. I actually, that color is quite interesting. A very, very slight sort of bluish purplish tint to it. So it's, it's serious looking, but it, it has a little bit more character than you might expect. I like that, that's pretty interesting. Okay, just think about that one. You know what, these blues are beautiful. The blue, no, I haven't, had, I haven't had a blue suit in a long time. Maybe I actually need a blue suit. That's beautiful, right? This, maybe a single breast, which I have not had in a while. This. Very elegant, old school. You know, this would be good as actually, because it's so elegant, this cloth. It could be good as um, Model 101. You know, when we did the Model 101, this is kind of the sort of thing we were imagining. And this, really interesting, slightly purple, slightly purple, grayish, charcoalish color. Super, super interesting. Yeah, see, if you look at, uh, you know what I mean, see, if you look at the edge of the cloth, you really start to notice that color. Cool. Next, I want to look at Taylor and Lodge. Taylor and Lodge, 
Um, they do our Decade Twill. So this is a cloth that we designed for them. It's like a really nice, creamy, soft, four-ply Super 160s yarn that hasn't been highly twisted. Um, so it, ha it retains like that natural creaminess of the wool. Um, and I've never actually ordered from their cut length books for myself. We've used their cloth obviously for our ready to wear collections before, but I've never done anything for myself. Um, so maybe this is the time to do something. This is the classic book. The classics are a lot of basics, but the, it's basic, but super high quality, right? And there's a few things in here. Ah, here we go. This is, this I really, really, really like. Like twill, but just with this strong blue. I like both of these. I can't decide though. So there we go. We got, we have the herringbone and we also have the twill. I think I prefer the twill over the herringbone. I'm not sure though. All right, but anyway, let's earmark that. Arrival. Very, very reliable book. Always got some good stuff. Um, it's primarily an eight and a half ounce book, uh, good for most times of the year. And recently they introduced also what's called the Winter Arrival. And the Winter Arrival, which we'll look at next, is a basically a heavier version of this. Um, it's got, you know, just enough body, just enough of a soft touch. Like it's a very crowd pleasing cloth. Plus the price on this is actually very reasonable too. So the Winter Arrival is like the heavier version. These go from eight and a half, like the regular rivals, eight and a half, and these are 10 ounce. And of the... It's kind of cool. You know, I haven't had something that's like strong and patterned like this in a while, and I wouldn't normally pick it, but I have to say it's, it's really appealing to me right now. All right, let's look at Laura Piana. Well, I put this card on the top because I knew I really liked it. This is cool. Blue with a green check. I have to say, like, um, when it comes to sport coats, I do like the Italian palette better. Like, there's just something about the Italian palette that is very, very unexpected, refreshing. You know, English palette tends to be very elegant, but quite subdued in comparison. I had a brief look at this before we made the video. So I'm skipping through these a little faster than I need to, uh, than I normally would. Uh, but I have to say on the second, on the second pass, I'm also finding a few things I didn't think I liked as much the first time around. Mm -hmm. That is very cool, very subtle. You see that? Like, almost an emerald green against a reddish brown and a mustard. In fact, it's not, even a, it's not even quite a mustard, it's something else in there. Really interesting. Okay, a little selection of sport coats here. Let's have a look at this. Drapper's Winter Sport Jackets. Unfortunately, this is an older book. So what that means is that there might be stuff in here that is no longer available. Um, but I do like this book. You know, they have great taste. They've got really interesting things in there. So maybe I'll find a few other things that I am very keen on, such as this, which I really like. I can't decide if I should get it or not because I have a lot of things like this, but eh, whatever. I still like it. <laughs> oh, this is kind of interesting, actually. You know, making a collection is an interesting exercise because things often look very different um, in a positive way when you see a whole group of them together. And if you manage to put together a collection that just thematically feels like it makes a lot of sense and is coherent, like it's a great feeling. I do like that too. This is cool. I do. I like these really, really big checks. And actually, now I think about it, I've never owned anything with a red check in it. So let's shortlist that sucker. Finally, um, Marling and Evans. I really like these guys. English Mill, it's actually owned now by an Italian conglomerate of mills. And um, I really like their taste. 
I really like the quality. I really like their taste. So let's have a little look here. No. No. This is pretty interesting. Actually, I led you in on a secret. This is actually what we're using for ready to wear um, later this year. Let's throw it in there anyways. Ooh, that's nice. I have yet to get one of these like very yellowish, palish jackets for myself, so that could be kind of interesting. See, this is what I mean by like mm, Italian taste. Like the color in that, like that blue is especially vibrant and somewhat unexpected against that dark chocolate check. I really like that. Purple is cool. That's cool too. Very cream, but see, imagine that now with darker trousers. Like this with, with blue jeans could be really good. Because you, you're seeing more of the cream than the blue really on this. So you're, you're thinking of this more like a cream jacket with some other stuff on top of it. This is really nice. Not too heavy. Quite vibrant. That's an interesting one. All right, this Marling and Evans book is interesting because this is the undyed selection. So all of this is made out of undyed yarn. Ooh. All very pale, but not in a bad way. The Pecora Nera that Laura Piana does is also a great choice if you're looking for kind of undyed stuff. Mm, I think I only picked that and that. Well, they were pretty good. All right, we'll keep them in. All right, I think I've looked at enough stuff now. I think I've looked at enough stuff now that I can probably mm, lay them all out and make some decisions, you know? Like at this point, I'm kind of thinking, based on what I've selected, is there enough stuff that's so compelling um, that I wanna get eight garments? Or is it all like pretty good stuff? Maybe I should be like four to six, something like that. So let's move on to that. I forgot to mention it earlier. The Bingley book, which is like the ceremonial book for drappers, has um, a navy Barathea. And I really like Barathea weave. And it's very rare to find at Ready to Wear a navy Barathea suit, you know, you typically find like black th Barathea, midnight Barathea in tuxedo form. So I was kind of interested in experimenting with that for a suit for myself this season. So let's also earmark that. Okay, let's go. Let's look at the suits. So uh, this is the mohair. Oh, here, here, we got that really unusual grayish purplish. We've got this, that very elegant creamish grayish. And then we have this. Very rich, slightly black blue, which I think is really interesting. On, the, on that Barathea stuff, we have this a midnight navy, and then a blue-ish, like a French navy, or even a royal blue. I don't know. I kind of feel like with the sheen, I want the darker color. And we got the Taylor and Lodge. Taylor and Lodge. We have this, which I still very, very like. And we have this that Navy herring bone. And here's the winter arrival. It's like a fun big pattern suit. I haven't done one of these in a while and I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I wouldn't mind trying one. It's been a while. The Stan Even Heritage Twist. You have that lovely guy right there. Kind of unusual blue toned hound's tooth. And then we also have this thing here, which I really like. This would be a really unusual suit, cause, just because of all that different color mixed in there. 
And then this. It's a little on the heavy side, but I really like it. You know what? I think I'm going to do this. I think this one, it's just so... It's just so interesting. And I've always wanted to make one of these heritage twist cloths. I, I love this mill and it, it kind of, it, it's always been on my mind to try and make something with this mill. Okay. So this is a probably, let's mark it with a star. Just like for the sake of broadening my horizons a little bit. Like I, I normally don't do these heavily patterned suits, but I think I need to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. So do that as well. One, two, all right, navy suit time. What do we got? Blue Barthea, we got this heavyweight, three-ply mohair wool. We have this really nice twill. And then we also have this really nice herringbone back here. Okay, it'll be this. I'm a Barathea man today. I think partly because of the weather, I'm struggling to pick this kind of slightly milled cloth that we have here with the softer finish. I like the crispness of the Barathea. I like the sheen. I think this could be pretty cool. Yeah, that's the one for me. All right, a bluer Barathea right there. Okay, now for the hard one. Now it's time to try and pick some sport coats. So, Start with this, and with this, I actually, because this is an older book, I actually need to check if any of these fabrics are, if all these fabrics are still in stock, because there's a, there's a chance that after I've selected it, they'll be like, oh, we're actually out of stock of that, and it won't be coming back for months, and I'll be like, ah, nuts. This, I've done so many times, I really gotta, like, get out of that a little bit. Not that it's bad, it's wonderful, it's just I've done it so many times. This, I, I think I wouldn't wear this. I love it, I don't think I'd wear it. This is interesting though. The red and the black is interesting. All right, let's shortlist this. With the sport coats, because there's so many choices, like we'll have to shortlist first. It's not like the suits where we can just make a quick decision. Fox Brothers, my old trusty friend, Fox Brothers. Ah, this is so good. This is so good. And see, this is the thing, right? When you start looking at all these checks together, like, you really need to see them all together at once because they're all good in their own ways, but you need to pick the one that's really, really gonna just work for you, which, okay. I think I'm here. I think my heart is here. So we got that. The other Fox Tweed book right here. See, now we already have this with the red. So maybe we don't need this anymore. This I still find super interesting. It's like an unusual shade of blue, very hairy. Yeah, I think this is, this is worth it. This is special. You can now see that despite looking through so many books, there really weren't there really are a few things that are just unique. Like you just don't see them anywhere else. Okay. Oh, I forgot the worsted flannel book. Worsted flannel book. Nice. Nice, but I think no need. No need for either of these. Okay. Magic cashmere book. Ah, oh, this is so nice. This is super nice. I do love this, but yeah, let's shortlist them. It's a really beautiful quality of navy cashmere. It's got a nice body to it. I love that twill, but maybe I substitute the Taylor and Lodge back in the plain color. Maybe. What do you think, folks? This one or this one? I like the stronger blue in this one. Like, cause the check is you know, thicker and more substantial, the blue comes out a little bit more. Okay, the Laura Piana items. So the Laura Piana, that's lovely. 
I would love something green again, but um, no, I've done this too many times. This I've never done. I'm actually even not quite sure if that's going to work on my skin. I think it works okay though. Yeah, that's good. Sometimes you need to see this stuff with a little bit of gold as well. See with the watch. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I do like that a lot. Okay. The reddish, no, the bluish. I actually really like the blue originally, but no. That is the one. Let's see if anything from Marlon Evans makes the cut for me today. Yes, I do like that a lot. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Put that back. And then these are wonderful. Hmm, mm, okay, I think I'm there. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a navy back here, ten. So we got ten things, and we should probably narrow this down to like mm, say four things. Four things with in mind. Um, the fact that some of these will end up as tailored pieces and some of these will end up as daywear pieces. So okay. like, I'm gonna put a pin in this for now. Um, this has been pretty fun. This has been pretty interesting, like trying to do this, you know, on camera and talk through a little bit of what, what I'm thinking about when I'm trying to make this little personal capture collection for myself. Um, you know, one of the good things about putting a limit on how many pieces you are intending to commission it forces you to make difficult choices, right? Where like just clearly some things are better for you, are like more useful to you, and some things are not. So I think I need to nail down that number. I need to go away for a day, think about what we have here and come back to this with fresh eyes. Um, so we're gonna shoot a part two of this where I make a more final cut of what I've selected today. And then we're gonna move on to doing trousers and we're gonna move on to doing shirts. Um, because, you know, obviously the whole point of this capsule collection is that it's not just about the tailored pieces, it's about having complete outfits uh, ready um, for the fall winter season. So that is about it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I certainly enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching.